Hello, and thanks for joining me on today's episode of Engrain Woodworks. Today, we're taking a look at the Yora Home Silverback 6060 CNC router. This is a wonderfully designed and highly competitive CNC designed to take on many of the heavy hitters in the industry, including the X-Carve, the Long Mill, and the Shapeco machines. This machine's beautifully designed with a 60 centimeter by 60 centimeter working area. That gives a full 24 inch by 24 inch working area and a 10 centimeter or 4 inch Z clearance. The machine's total footprint comes in at 143 by 117 by 57 centimeters or 56 by 46 by 22 inches, weighing in at 88 pounds. The package that you receive includes all of the components needed to assemble the machine, including the hardware and tools for the assembly. The machine is specced out with a 400 watt spindle motor, but also includes a mount for the Makita RT0700 or RT0701 65 millimeter diameter router. This is a fantastic addition and will definitely compete with many of the major brands on the market. This machine features an MDF spoil board, pre-drilled with threaded inserts already installed, ready to use with the clamping mechanisms that were delivered with the machine. An ER11 collet makes it very easy to purchase quality collets to support any size of bit that you'd like to use with the machine. DM542 micro step drivers paired with NEMA 23 stepper motors on all axes give this machine incredible speed and exceptionally low noise. Acme lead screws give great precision and limit switches eliminate any issues with jamming and allow you to home the machine flawlessly. An emergency stop button makes it to where you can cut the machine off at a moment's notice if you see an error with your cut. A Z probe makes it incredibly easy to set your Z axis height the Silverback 6060 is running Gerbil firmware, allowing it to work with many of the common CAD and CAM programs on the market, including Vetric, Carveco, and Easel software. When you receive your machine, it will come in two packages. One houses the controller, and the other houses all of the components for the machine. Taking a look inside the large box, the first thing that we're greeted with are the MDF beds and two aluminum extrusions that make up the front and rear of the machine. They're very well packaged with pre-cut foam inserts that keep everything separated and safe. The second layer contains the bridge for the drag chain, the drag chain itself, the X gantry assembly, fully assembled, the spindle and adapters for the spindle. And the third level of this packaging includes the Y rails fully assembled, the Z axis assembly, and the mount for the spindle. The small box inside includes all of the hardware and cables needed for the assembly. Now we'll walk through the assembly of the machine. First, we'll start with the base structure. The base structure includes the front and rear aluminum extrusion and both Y-axis assemblies. You will also need 16 M5 by 20 screws with spring washers and flat washers. Here's a completed assembly so you can see what we're trying to accomplish here. In each of the corners, you'll screw through the green plate into the black aluminum extrusion with four of the M5 by 20 screws with a flat washer and a spring washer on each. You'll notice in this final shot that I took a moment to make sure that the edge of the green plate was aligned with the edge of the aluminum extrusion. I did this on all four corners. Now that we've assembled the base of the machine, we'll take some time to square it. Using a square, 
will check in all four corners to verify whether or not the machine is already square. If not, we will rack the machine side to side, adjusting the screws to make sure that we have enough play to move back and forth until we have all of the sides square. Another method for checking for square would be measuring across the diagonals of the base. So from, say, the front right to the rear left, and the front left to the rear right, and making sure that you get the same number, and if not, racking it until it fits in just right. Next, we'll move on to installing the MDF bed. To do so, you need 12 M5 by 20 bolts and the two pieces of MDF bed. Aligning the front edge with the top of the aluminum extrusion opens the space for the bolts to go through and we install all 12 of the bolts, making sure not to over tighten since this is just MDF that we're screwing into. You will notice at the front of the machine that the holes come all the way out almost to the ex extrusion that runs across the front of the machine but in the back in this shot you'll see that there's a significant space between the holes and the edge of the machine. We need to make sure that the bed is oriented in this way so that we can make sure that we can use all of the threaded inserts for our clamping mechanisms. And with those 12 bolts installed our MDF bed is installed. Moving on, we'll install the lower drag chain mount. For this, we need two M5 by six bolts and two M5 T-nuts, as well as the large drag chain mount. I decided to install the T-nut and bolt through the drag chain mount before trying to install it into the extrusion. I found that to be a little bit easier than placing the T-nut into the extrusion and trying to screw through. Once I slid the lower drag chain mount in place, I had to move the Y gantry forward to make sure that I had enough clearance to get the wrench in there. And this drag chain mount, I know it's hard to see in this particular clip, but it gets installed in front of the Y1 motor, so this would be the rear left of the machine as you're facing it. Snug down those bolts. And now we can prepare the Y carriages for the X gantry. Here I took a small 6 inch rule and placed it from the green plate out the uh, C channel here towards the gantry and used the knob on the motor to bring it in uh, similar to a feeler gauge where it's just touching it. You can just feel some resistance as you pull it out of the gap and then did the same to the other side and that ensured that I had both of them aligned the same. And then we move on to installing the X gantry. We use eight of these M5 by 16 bolts with a flat washer and a spring washer for each. Now we bring the X gantry in and we set it over top of the Y carriages and I found it easiest to grab a bolt and start it in and then move to the other side and throw one in as well to keep this from rocking backwards. Uh, if you look at that silver plate down below where the gantry sits over the carriage, if you align that front corner with the front edge of the silver plate, uh, it makes it to where the holes line up pretty close. Once you get everything aligned, you can put in the remaining six bolts. Now we'll install the lower drag chain mount. And then the bridge to carry the drag chain across the x-axis. You'll have to stay tuned. I'm going to add some LED lights to that as well. 
in the next episode. And then our upper drag chain mount. And then we'll move on to the Z axis. Uh, you need four of these M5 by 25 bolts. You'll notice that the holes in this axis are slightly elongated, and this will allow you to have some movement to adjust and make sure that this gantry or that this uh, carriage is perpendicular to the bed. And it's really important to make sure that it is. Uh, we'll tram the machine in another episode, but getting it good when we start uh, with the assembly is, is very important. So we're going to use our square on the bed, make sure that this is standing plumb and uh, tighten it down and I had to use a second wrench with a hole in the back of it to get some leverage because uh, you can't get in with the short end of that. Next we'll install the spindle mount, and this is four bolts. Again, we'll just snug them up, check and make sure that it's plumb, and then tighten those bolts down. And this is the insert that allows us to use our 400 watt spindle. I was just showing there where that slit has to be aligned with the space in the bracket so that you can tighten it down. And to wrap up the Z axis, we'll drop the spindle in and tighten up those bolts there. You want to get them snug, but remember that this is aluminum, so don't. Uh, go crazy over tightening it. You'll see the wrench actually bends a little bit there with just how much I'm putting on it and uh, and I didn't feel like I was putting too much pressure on it. I'm going to install the drag chain next. And best practice here is to uh, lay all this out so you know where it's going to end at and then you can throw your screws in. Two at each end of each section of the drag chain for eight screws total. Now we'll move on to making our connections, starting with the spindle, since it's furthest away, connecting the positive and negative, then connecting the Z uh, limit switches, the Z motor, the X limit switches, the X motor, the Y limit switches, the Y1 motor will be next, and finally the Y2 motor. And then we'll move on to the control box end of the drag chain. This top row here is where all of your motors get their power and signal as well as the spindle. And then the second row is all of the limit switches and the Z probe. You can see there also that there's a switch. You want to make sure that it's towards the spindle side. Uh, down on the lower right hand corner. 
um, not in the drag chain, but still need to be connected. We installed the Z probe, the USB, and the power cable. And that's it. You're done. You're ready to hook this up to a laptop and start working on creating your first carve. Uh, we'll be connecting this and starting our first carve in the next episode, so stay tuned and subscribe for more. Thanks.